Today on Dotto Tech answers to many of your questions about Google Photos. Cue the music. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? I am so glad you are joining us. We make tech easy so you can do more. More what? Well, you may find time to organize your photos after today's video because that is the topic du jour. Now, before we begin, I do have a small favor to ask. Could you please subscribe to this channel and while you're at it, ring the notification bell so that you can hear about more of our videos as they come down the pipe. Today's topic, as I said, Google Photos. And I have to admit, I was a little bit surprised with how good Google Photos was when I first started to use it. I didn't expect a lot from Google Photos, but it has slowly become my go-to application. And so today I thought you and I could go through a lot of your questions that you have about Google Photos as well. We'll take a look at kind of how it works because I imagine a lot of you aren't yet embracing the whole Google photo idea. And it's understandable because we take most of our pictures now on our smartphones and all of our smartphones have a built-in photo application, which typically dovetails with uh, something on our operating system. So bringing the Google photo uh, part into the equation isn't probably something that we've all done, but it is something that we should all consider because there are oh so many benefits. Let's start with just a quick overview of Google Photos and take a look at it. Now, Google Photos will live in several locations. It's a cloud-based service, part of the Google ecosphere. I've got it running here on my desktop, but I also have it running on my smartphone. So it's the exact same set up the exact same kind of metaphor in all of the different locations. Now you will access your Google photo account through your Google account. It's part of, as I said, part of the Google ecosphere. And one of the biggest strengths of the Google photo uh, product is unlimited storage with a caveat. If you're willing to keep I your images. I don't understand. I just got interrupted by Google home because it thinks. <coughs> that I'm talking to it when I'm talking about Google, but I've just disconnected it from its brain. <laughs> I, I hope I don't pay for that. Where was I? Ah uh, yes, Google Photos is mostly free. That is, as long as you are willing to store your images and your videos at what Google considers to be a reasonable resolution. What's a reasonable resolution? Well, if your videos are 1080p, which is high definition, or your photos are 16 megapixels or less, which is a pretty high resolution photo, then you have unlimited storage for free. If you want to have higher storage, if you want to have higher resolution than those images, then your storage counts against your Google Drive quota and you may need to upgrade your storage in order for you to store all of your images. But all in all, it is a fantastic deal uh, for most of us because we don't need a higher resolution than 16 megapixels and it gives us just unlimited storage. So that is a fantastic deal. Now. Another th nice thing that Google Photos does is it allows us to very quickly take photos and then upload them to the cloud to storage within Google Photos, which frees up space on our phones. And I know a lot of us are starting to run into uh, storage limitations on our smartphones because we just keep so much information on our smartphones. Now, I will caution you with one caveat. While a lot of people will consider the fact that they've stored their images in Google Photos to have their photos now backed up, I don't think they are backed up if you don't have them in another location as well. The whole idea of a backup means that we have a secondary location. And if the only place you're storing things is in Google Drive or in, in, in Google's Photos, uh, then you don't have a backup, do you? Then they are the primary storage. So what I do personally is I never remove the images from my phone until I've also backed them up into my photo library on my computer. So I have a physical backup here in my photo library on my computer, which incidentally creates other backups because my computer gets backed up as well. Plus I back them up to Google Photos. I believe that probably the most valuable single digital asset I have or the one that's most important to me are my photos and videos. And so having them redundantly backed up is just a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I'm pretty sure it's a good thing as far as you're concerned as well. Speaking of which, I would love to hear what your backup systems are. How do you back up your photos? How do you make sure? Do you have a backup? Love to hear your comments uh, below. 
Google Photos is part of the Google ecosystem, which means you access it through your Google account, the same account that you use to access your Gmail, your Google Calendar, all of your different Google services. It's one of the Google services that are available to you. And when you look at it, opening it in the browser as I have it here, it's just pretty much like any other photo management tool. They all have their idiosyncrasies, but you'll very, very quickly figure out how, the, how Google works and how Google Photos manages your images. Down the left-hand side, you have something called the Assistant, which is a constantly changing thing. It's always looking at your photos and trying to figure out creative things for you to do with your photos, such as creating shared albums, photo books, collages, animations. It'll even make movies for you. For example, right here is a doggy movie. I asked it to make a movie of all of my doggy pictures, and look what it did. It did a pretty good job, actually. There's old Farlster. Oh, there's Farley and Mimi. Oh, there, they're sleeping away on the couch, yes. Oh, they even got a barking theme behind. So it'll, it'll create these silly little automated movies. Using Google's artificial image recognition intelligence uh, to find all the different pictures of your dogs uh, in different doggies uh, to make the movie. And it, it, offers this based on trips and a whole bunch of other things. It's a fun, quick way to quickly create all sorts of different memories. And that is kind of a moving target because Google Assistant, they're constantly adding new things to Google Assistant. Uh, the next button down gives you just access to your photos and actually all of your files, actually. Your photos and your videos are available here. Then you've got a sharing menu, which allows you to quickly and effectively share images with uh, with those you love or, or, or other people. Uh, even I guess, I guess you could even share images with people you don't like so much. And then there's a dedicated one for creating photo books. Obviously, there's a revenue side to that uh, where they want you to print off books that you then pay money for and people can make money. But photos is where it's at. Now, the biggest challenge that we all have is organizing our photos. And Google Photos for me has a game-changing technology built into it that has completely revolutionized how I organize, how I seek, and how I find photos. And it's based on their image recognition. And this is technology that completely blew me away. If you just click in the search bar in Google Photos, up pops a unique window that includes different names of recent searches, uh, the ability to choose different types of media to search for, but then this whole roster of faces that it finds within your images. Depending on what country you live in, and most of you will have this available to you, Google Photos goes through and parses out the faces in the photos and collects them together and then asks you who they are. And if you identify people based on their faces, uh, then you can actually start to create searches based on who is in the photo. So if we take a look, if we just click here on this side arrow, it basically pops up all of the different faces of people who it finds in my photos. If you take a look there, and in many cases what happens is I've gone through, I've clicked on the individual, and I've assigned a name. So I can now search for all of the images that contain that person, that person or that pet. You see here, I've got Smidget there, or sorry, Smidget there, and Mimi, our cat here. So if I want all the pictures of my cat, I can just quickly do a search, and up will come all the pictures that I've taken of the cat Mimi over the past few years that are stored in Google Photos. This is truly amazing technology. And as I scroll down, you can see there's lots of people who I haven't yet assigned. Oh, there's my, there's my good buddy, John Beeler. Let me just add John. And the cool thing is, it actually looks in your Google contacts, and now it will assign that person with those contacts. And look, it's finding pictures from years ago, John and I at a hockey game, way back in the day. And here we are, back in 2013, when John used to come on as a regular on my radio show. John always used to wear the Google Glass. Look at him there with the Google Glass. So we've got pictures all the way back, five, six, seven years, uh, pictures that I've taken with John at different locations doing different things. This is... As is this to me, this recognition and this smart technology is groundbreaking as far as, and, and, and it changes the way that I do everything. So now when I'm looking for a pictures of any friends of my, or of myself, I just type in me and I get all of my pictures of me all listed out. Now, here is where it starts to get even more unbelievably cool. Not only will it search for pictures based on face, but it'll search for pictures based on what you're doing and what's in the image or where you were. So, for example, if I want just to, to look at, find all the pictures of Shannon and I when we were in New York, I can just type in New York 
And up comes all of the images from Shannon and my last trip to New York. Any time, I guess, we've been, but we've only been once together as a couple. But there we are. Oh, there's Shannon and I in New York. But there I am with other friends in New York uh, at a different time. There I am with, uh, with Kim Garst and Sue Zimmerman for a social media event. So there we are in all the images I have of New York. Do I, do I need better? Let's go to Montreal. Let me go to all of my favorite cities. Pictures of Montreal, and there I am, and I, uh, pictures of a, a speaking gig that I did in Montreal just a little while back. Absolutely amazing. Again, not just locations and people. You can obviously search based on date, but you can also search based on activity. For example, what do I love to do? I love to fish. Look at all my fishing photos. I type in fishing and it brings up all the pictures. Now I didn't go through and tag these pictures as fishing. It just recognized that there are fish and boats and things relating to fishing in those pictures. And some, some of them are confusing. They don't always, they don't always uh, make a lot of sense, uh, but by and large, it's unbelievably accurate. Oh, let me show you how it works in the mobile phone as well. So here I've got my iPhone in this particular case. You've got the exact same search menu. Look at this, it's unbelievable. So if I do a search for all of my images in the kitchen, let's see what it comes up with. Oh, there's all the pictures with photos and with cooking utensils and us in the kitchen, etc. Isn't that some kind of spectacular? I just, I just love this. There I am in the in our kitchen up in the caribou. And if I want to share any of these images or modify them in any way, we've got simple basic editing built in. So first of all, we have the sharing menu. If I tap here on the bottom to share, I can text it, I can um, email it to people, I can share it to a variety of different applications very easily right from the menu, right from this menu. Or I can also go in and you can do some really nice, simple editing, M cropping, and adding filters. It's not real photo retouching, but it's just taking an, an image like this and then applying different features. The auto, the auto correction feature, or then you can apply different types of filters. Make, and here's a cool thing. As you're going through the filters, especially if you're deciding on images that you're gonna be using, say for Instagram or for different posts, if you wanna go back, anytime you wanna see the original, you just press and hold and it puts it back to the original. And this works both, both on the desktop and on the smartphone phone version, is anytime you've got a filter in place, you've applied a filter, or the Vogue filter, there it is, and by just pressing and touching, tapping on the image, it actually shows you what the original image looked like, uh, and, uh, and then allows you to then, of course, see it with the filter applied. Once that's all done, you can simply click done, and you've got the new version of the photo that you can use for whatever social media posting application you want. And you always can revert back to the original. So it's lossless editing as far as that is concerned. Google Photos has become a part of my photo strategy. Not my entire photo storage and library strategy, but a significant part of my strategy. And I think it's well worth taking a look at for your photo strategy as well. Free ubiquitous, easy to use, some incredible intelligence built in that helps you organizationally to find the photos that you look for. And increasingly, as you take hundreds and thousands of photos a year, being able to effectively search for the photos and find photos that you want and that are valuable to you is gonna be, there's gonna be a premium based on that ability. So you can spend a lot of time going through and organizing and deleting and naming and tagging photos or you can learn to rely on search that's built into things like Google Photo that is gonna have a profound impact on how you organize your images in years to come. I hope you found our video today to be useful. Remember, please subscribe to our channel and we would love to hear from you what you think of Google Photos, how you like to do your photos and manage your photos, and other topics you like to see coming up on other shows here on Dotto Tech. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.